what I saw Hashem today hurt me so badly. I remember when I read that Moshe Rabbeinu realized that the Jews deserved to be slaves in Egypt. Why? Because of the way they treated each other. When he saw that that kind of Navi Ram who ran to Pharaoh like a bunch of gossiping little girls, yo, to start a fight. To make Pharaoh kill Moshe Rabbeinu. They tried to kill him, but they couldn't. Hashem saved him, yo. So today I also realized something. I saw one of these news stations, Israeli news stations, like promoting tourism in Israel. It might have been a commercial from before the war. And they were touting, you know how it's like called the startup nation. It's the fastest growing cities in Tel Aviv. And, this, and then I couldn't believe what they said, yo. LGBTQ supporters. We have a parade every year in Tel Aviv. Like they were touting that as one of the like talking points of coming to live in Israel, yo. Now you ask yourself, yo. But Moshe Rabbeinu realized that the Jews deserve to be slaves in Egypt because of that Dan and Aviram. You're telling me there's not a part of you that feels like we also deserve what happened on October 7th because of that? A billion percent, yo. You know what the scary part is, yo? Is that the few right now can destroy the many. We see that the few lefty Jews are destroying all of us, yo. They're protesting. They want to cease fire. And they want to talk to Hamas, yo. Get out of here with this, yo. Why you want to talk to these dudes, bro? They'll slice your throat, videotape it, and blast it to the world in a propaganda video. You don't get it, yo. I always told you, yo, whatever claim you have against God is lame. Your claim is lame. But here's a lame claim. Woe to the wicked and woe to their neighbor, yeah? But that's usually when the wicked are the majority and the righteous are the few. But here we have the lefty Jews are the minority. And it's woe to the wicked and woe to the righteous. How could that be? You know what Hashem just told me? There's not so many righteous. As many lefties as they are, that's how many righteous people they are. And it hurts me to say that, but that's what Hashem just told me in my heart, yo. And it makes sense. It makes sense because if it was more righteous, then Hashem would destroy the wicked on the count of the righteous. But if the righteous and the evil are even, <laughs> then the evil will probably win out, yo. Uh, they want a ceasefire, yo. They want to talk to Hamas, yo. What kind of a, yo, I'm not going to... Like get too tough with them because obviously they're going through a lot of pain and stuff like that. I'm talking about the hostage families. But just look at the lefty Jews in Israel, yo. Go look at every hot go look at hostage square. They don't have pride flags? For sure they do. It's all that lefty liberal democracy. I told you democracy will get you Joe Biden. That's what the democracy will get you Kamala Harris, but you want a democracy? I'll never forget when the Jews said to Samuel, We want a king. He was so hurt. Hashem was hurt more. On a king, why you want? You already have the king of all kings. What king do you want? So you know what Samuel told him? He's gonna steal from you. He's gonna rob from you. He's gonna oppress you. He's gonna make your children as slaves. Get out of here with this, yo! And the people still demand. They wanted to be like the goyim. They needed a king. Need a king? Why you need a king when you have the king of kings, yo? The king of all kings. I don't even like calling him a king because he's so much more than a king, yo. He's a father. He's a god. Look how versatile Hashem is. He's the father. He's the mother. He's the life source. He's the love. He's the modesty. Oh, man. He's, forget about it, bro. You can't, you can't even imagine to fathom how great he is, yo. I promise you that is so true. I told you. Next time you go to any source of water, yo, just pick it up in your hands and throw it up in the air. And watch how it breaks up into little water molecules, yo. And then you realize it's not a big body of water. It's millions and millions and millions of molecules of water attached together. What a miracle. It's like the grain of the sand, yo. It's the exact same thing. The sand is different because you can pick it up, you see it, it's more there. But it also looks like one big, long land of sand. It's not. It's trillions and trillions and trillions. Man, you take a handful of sand, you're talking maybe a million grains over there, yo. I mean, so just imagine. That's a lot, yo. Hashem just wants to show you, yo, his his power. So you're gonna say some atheist goy is gonna come and say, oh, you see, he's bragging, he's bragging. No, he's not bragging. He wants you to see his wonders so you can follow his word. He's trying to impress you, believe it or not. Can you imagine? 
<laughs> he needs to impress you. Yes. yes. He wants to impress you. I'm just telling you what it is. Yo. He doesn't need you, bro. Trust me. But you're his son, so he wants to impress you. You know, it reminds me of the story of a kid that was on his father's shoulders. And they were walking him and his father, you know, his father's carrying him on his shoulders for miles and miles. And finally, they pass by some guy who's walking the other way. And the kid looks at the guy and goes, do you know where my dad is? And the guy looks at him in shock, like, oh, you don't know he's been carrying you these last four miles out? So he told the kid, look back. So the kid looked back and he saw all the footprints. And he realized that his father was carrying him. He just didn't see it. You understand? It's the same thing with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, how he, you know, I could just tell you in my life, and I won't tell my business, you know why? Because if you want peace in your life, don't tell your business to nobody. I just told that to this rabbi, one of the few that I like in this world, unfortunately, yo. God, how many rabbis did I meet that are so fake, yo, yo, fake, I can't. Yo, and they played the part, the beard. I remember I told this one dude, friend of mine that we knew this dude that we worked with one of these rabbis yo, something looks like santa claus yo <laughs> he looks like a jolly guy wicked beyond yo beyond bro if i tell you achaz go check who achaz is yo by the way yoakim his father was yeah yoshua right so then came yeah yoakim he got exiled i think on the way when they were bringing him to babylon bro he was killed and they said that he had the burial of a donkey meaning they just left him on the side of the road they didn't even bury him, yo. This is a king of Israel, yo. And then you had Yeyo Akin, who I think was also exiled 11 years later, if I'm not mistaken, for 37 years. He languished in jail, yo. Yo, 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 I'm showing you some of the punishments that Hashem gave you. Let's talk about some of the punishment that Hashem gives. It's good for me, it's good for you, it's good to fear God, yo, because it will prevent you from a sin. A beautiful, sexy girl that's married comes up to you, starts whispering in your ear. <laughs> You're gonna fall, bro, if you don't run away. I'm just letting you know, bro. It's that powerful, you know what I mean? So one of the best ways to combat that is the wisdom of God. And some of the wisdom of God is strict, severe punishments, like a holocaust, like you're gonna eat your kids, like you're gonna starve to death, yo, like you're gonna eat the flesh of your flesh. That's not your kids, that's a different verse. You're gonna eat your own arm, yo. You're literally gonna chop off your arm, God forbid, yo, cook it and eat it to survive, yo. These are the kind of punishments that Hashem meets out, and today you know, God forbid, yo. Lo aleinu, yo. Cancer, all these different types of diseases, dementia, Man, these are vicious diseases, bro. And then you have, God forbid, other things, man. So you start to see that when Hashem is like acting like that, yo, that means those punishments came from sins. So let's think what kind of sins. You know what kind of sins I'm going to tell you? Provoking God's anger in an arrogant way. It's already arrogant if you're provoking His anger. But I double it to let you know how arrogant you have to be to even... Yo, yo, I told you, man. Sometimes you could come up with the greatest claim. I already told you your claim is the lame. I know who I'm dealing with, yo. I know who I'm standing in front of. The most high, yo. And he wants me to tell you about some of his punishments, yo. The 149 or 148 curses in the Torah. I think it's 148, if I'm not mistaken. Only Hashem knows. <laughs> and maybe you do too. But I'll double check that when I get off, yo. Just to, you know what I mean? Strengthen it in my mind to always know the truth. But the curses are, man, you will, you know, you'll get married and someone will take your wife. You'll have a vineyard, but somebody will drink the wine. You'll have a garden, but somebody will take it like they did to Navot. You know, things like this, man. Vicious things. You'll lose your kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yo, losing a kid, man. Go look at all the people that lost a child, yo. You never understand that kind of hurt. It's a piece of your soul literally died. Literally, literally, literally. Like, that's why there's such a, like, feeling of despair and, like, uh, hurt, yo. Because it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a part of your soul died, yo. That's vicious, yo. Vicious, vicious. But the parents that lost children should always know that when you lose a child, all your sins get cleansed. So there is some good in it. Not only that, your kid went to heaven direct. His mission was over. 
listen, let me give, give you some basic knowledge so you always know. God put you in this earth as a test to fix what you need to fix, right? So whatever you struggle with the most, you know what I mean? That's your test. Shabbat, women, food, drugs, I don't know, whatever your temptations are. You need to know that you were put in this earth to fix these things. For example, somebody that's gay, they were gay in their last life. That's how you know that they're responsible for their behavior. It's not that they were born like that and then you end it. No, they were born like that, absolutely. You'd be a fool to deny that. But you also have to mention, they also have free choice to change it. What do you think, a guy that's angry his whole life can't change it? Well, it's the same thing here. A guy with this disgusting, dirty desire, where did it come from? His last life. So God is giving you another chance to fix it. Don't waste that opportunity, yo. There yet may still be hope, you know what I mean? Really. There yet still may be hope. I don't know how he says it, yo, but the way he says it in the book of Jeremiah is so dope. But I'll, when you see the name of my video, you'll know how exactly he said it, yo. <laughs> There's always hope. At any moment, a big rasha could do chula. Eliezer ben Dordea did it. And how did he do it? He was with a prostitute and when they finished doing the act she burped and you know what she said just like this burp will never return to my mouth so too and then she banged on the table like a demonic demon so too Eliezer ben Dordea will never return to God yo the emptiness he felt in his soul right there was hell he was shamed he got dressed, he went outside, he fell to the floor, he looked up at the sky. He's not a religious guy, yo. So he saw these two huge mountains. So he said, oh mountains, oh mountains, please, please pray for me. So the mountains told him, pray for you. <laughs> We're too busy praying for ourselves. He looked at the stars, oh stars, oh stars, the starry hosts of heaven. Please pray for me. They gave him the same reply. And to the moon, he thought maybe, maybe since the moon was humbled, <laughs> he didn't know that, but subconsciously in his soul, he knew that the moon was humbled, so maybe the moon will listen to him. So he said, Oh, moon. So the moon cut him off, and he said, With all my humbleness, I'm gonna let you know, pray for yourself, my brother. So he did. So you're gonna tell me, Oh, so because of that, he became a big Sadiq and Hashem erased all his sins? No, it's not just because he cried. Or he did Shuba. No, how he did Shuba. Let's see. He cried till he died. You understand? In his prayer. He was praying from the depths of his soul, yo. And his heart stopped and he died, yo. He died of a broken heart, yo. I know my Uncle Jack died like that, yo. May he rest in peace. And may he have a hand in this talk right here. Amen. He wasn't, you know the most religious let's just say so god willing you know and i love him you know why i could tell you this that he's charismatic is it not? you know why because he's my mother's brother that's why because if you knew how much i love my mother i would automatically love her brother so i love you jack and i mentioned jack because i usually don't and uncle zeki yo he recently passed away and my mother forgets, yo, like she's starting to forget now in her old age. So we didn't even tell her that he died, yo. Like, why? What would you gain from that? Nothing. Just bring her pain in her heart. Like, he just stopped calling and she just forgot. Scary, yo. Very scary. She lives, like, in the moment. She only remembers, like, what's in front of her, yo. But that's okay. That's because she didn't keep Shabbat, so I should have made her forget. This way she's not obligated to keep Shabbat. And I was always wondering, how was Hashem going to save her from breaking Shabbat? She didn't break it in an arrogant way, but she was such a tzaddikid. Modest in her dress, modest in her words. A pure soul. She stood for justice and truth. She was a real, real woman, yo, when she was young and healthy. And in her prime, she was... <laughs> Unbelievably knowledgeable, yo. If you listen to my videos, you know all about my mother. I call her King Solomon's sister. When your mouth is closed, you can't get in trouble. <laughs> when you complain too much, you're the problem. That's it. Just those two right there should be enough to let you know who she was, yo. She, I remember what she told me. A 
person only changes when they look in the mirror and they're disgusted at what they see. I heard somebody say a person only changes when they take accountability, but that's not true. You can take accountability and then stumble back into your problem, you know? Nah. It has to be when you're ashamed of what you see. Then you won't commit the sin because of the shame. The shame will prevent you from committing the sin just like the fear will. You understand? Just like the fear will. You should know this, yo. That's why I told you before, yo, about some of the punishments. But I told you it's to the arrogant. It's to the rude. So you're going to tell me, so why did my mom suffer like that? You know why? Because she could have kept Shalom and she chose not to. That's why. She didn't really give it thought like that, you understand? That I tried to tell her, I tried to explain to her. And I remember she used to clean on Shabbat. And I said, she's like, no, cleanliness is close to godliness. He wants me to clean on Shabbat. I said, nah, stop with that, yo. Sacrifice one day for Hashem. No, I love him. He knows. You know, she had her arguments. And I, she would probably, I thought, would get away with it. But nah, it just goes to show you Hashem is not letting anything go, yo. But... You know what? <laughs> the greatest thing is that, like, through Medicare, they send her these, like, couple of, uh, like, nurses to take care of her, like, in the crib. And she's good. Don't get me wrong, yo. Like, if you spoke to her, she looks good. It's just she forgets, yo. But, you know, she needs, you know, attention. That's really what it is, yo. She needs constant attention. <laughs> she's If her mind is not busy, she'll get, like, depressed, yo. And a lot of that has to do with the food, but I know it has to do with Shabbat because that's the only thing she ever did wrong, yo. Nothing else she did wrong. Trust me. I'm her son. I will tell you, yo. I already told you too much about her already. She wouldn't want me telling you her business, yo. Word well, up. She would tell me, if you want peace in your life, don't tell your business to nobody. Word up, yo. But I only said that to let you know that Hashem made her forget so that she's not obligated to keep Shabbat. Now I know that when she leaves this world, she's in heaven for sure. And I'll tell you a secret. I don't know if it's going to happen. Only God knows. But I pray to God that he should take her in her sleep. Just for what she went through with all this like stress and she forgets and she's nervous and this and that. You know, that anxiety that she gets, God forbid, yo, Hashem. I'm asking you to let her pass away in her sleep. Thank you, Akadosh Baruch I said thank you whether he does it or not because I'm always thanking him. You know, sometimes I meet people that don't like me. And you know, it's the first thing I know about them, that they don't love God. If you love God, you would feel my energy guaranteed, bro. Guarantee for sure that's true, yo. It's a spiritual thing, yo. <laughs> you got to feel it, yo. You just got to immerse your soul in the Word of God, yo. You just got to fall in love with the Word of God. Yo, put the book of Job, the book of Malachi, the book of... Whatever you want, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ruth, uh, Jonah, whatever you want. <laughs> Zechariah, take those books on audio books, put some music to it, and listen to it while you sleep. I do that, yo. And you should do that too, word up. I'm giving you great advice, yo. Because when you're sleeping, it's like a hypnosis, yo. You'll be hypnotized to the word of God. There yet may still be hope. I got that from the book of Jeremiah, yo. And he was telling the people, yo, like, psh, it's the end of the rope. But there still may be hope. I like that. I've got this for a whole. Yo, I love making these videos, yo, and you don't even know what happened to me. Yo, I'm thinking about erasing what I said about my mother, yo. But I wanted you to see that connection between her forgetting and not keeping Shabbat, yo. And again, it's to show you that Hashem is not letting things slide, yo. Yes, if she was shown contriteness about it and said she's sorry and did Shuba and did her best to keep it, I agree. Absolutely, it would get erased. I told you, if you try, it's like as if you did it, yo. But don't worry, yo. She's also going to get a lot of credit for the Torah I study. I told her one day she's going to go up to Shamayim. And they're going to tell her, man, you studied a lot of Torah, yo. And she's going to be like, what are you talking about? I don't study Torah. And they're going to show her all the Torah that her son studied, yo. That's deep. And I gladly give it to her, yo. Because she did so much for me, yo. If I tell you when I was young, young teenage kid, yo, coming back from the club at three in the morning. And my mom used to stay up and look through the kitchen blinds, yo. First, she used to leave the window open and look. And I used to be with my friends, so I felt embarrassed. So I told her, don't do that. 
<laughs> so the next time I came, I could see the blinds were down. I was like, ah, thank God. And I could see her eye peeking through the blinds. Oh, she is so funny, yo. That's the kind of love. And you think I was grateful? No, I came upstairs and said, oh, I told you not to watch for me. Don't do that. I'm not a little kid, you know. Ignorant people act, yo. I didn't have God in my life back then. I didn't really appreciate my mother like I should have, yo. Now, you can see the way I talk about her, yo. I beyond appreciate her, yo. All my life to her, yo. Word up. <laughs> literally. Literally. I love you, mommy, so much. And soon, the both of us are going to be alive in the time of the Mashiach. And I can't wait, yo. Oh, I cannot wait till Mashiach comes. I want Mashiach yesterday, yo. Because when he comes, that means the eradication of all evil. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Iran, and anybody else that has the guts to murder the terrorism, yo. You're always yelling, Allah Akbar, yeah. If you really believed in God so much, you wouldn't murder and pray to him. He would murder for you. You didn't even need to murder. Please let my mother pass away in her sleep, Hashem. Amen. Love you, Hashem.